If you watched the latest EBI event, you saw a lot of late stage armbar defenses that had the crowd and even the announcers going wild. There's the arm and it's extended, 10 seconds left. Hannah able to survive, now readjusting his Madrid. Arm is fully extended, tick tock. Now I understand a lot of us do jujitsu for fun and do not really have a desire to work on these late stage defenses. But nonetheless, I think this is a very interesting topic. And in this video, I'm going to give my opinion as to how these top level athletes are making it seem as if they don't have ligaments. And before we get into this video, I think it's important to note that we're kind of playing with fire with these late stage escapes, especially when dealing with joint locks. So please take responsibility for your own safety. And if you're an upper belt, it might not be the best idea to try these escapes on people of lower rank than you because if a white belt grabs a purple belt's arm, they might have something to prove at the price of your arm. So if you're interested in applying these late stage defenses, my recommendation is to start with someone you trust and build resistance very gradually. Now let's get into the video. <laughs> Now, when working defense from any position, it is very beneficial to understand what the offensive person wants. And then from a defensive perspective, we come up with strategies to deny them these things. So if we're trying to finish an armbar, the number one prerequisite is that our hips remain close to their shoulder. The way we achieve this is by following their escape with our hips. So if our opponent is trying to escape to the north by doing a turning escape, our hips should be facing the north to keep contact with their shoulder. If they're trying to escape to the south, doing what Donaher refers to as the Passover escape, then our hips should follow and face to the south to maintain contact with their shoulder. If our opponent is escaping to the north but our hips are facing to the south, we no longer control our opponent's shoulder giving them the ability to escape. When actually trying to break the arm, if our opponent is turning to the north, we want their arm going over our south hip. And if our opponent is turning to the south, we want their arm over our north hip. So now that we understand what our opponent needs to break our arm, we can use this knowledge to develop our defensive strategy for escape. Now, it sounds a bit terrifying, but honestly, there's no other way to put it. At the highest levels of competition, you have to have the ability to snap someone's arm in half. And you're not going to be able to do that if their arm is in the center of your chest. Sure, you might be able to pop their arm a few times, but as we saw in this latest EBI, people are not going to tap just because you extend their arm. They're going to tap because you're going to break their arm. So if our arm is in the center of our opponent's body, we can alleviate a lot of the pressure of the arm bar by lifting our shoulder off the ground as much as possible. From there, we can either initiate or our opponent will bring our arm to either the north hip or the south hip to break it. For this first example, we're going to throw our arm to the north hip and initiate our turning escape. A successful turning escape is often the result of us getting our thumb pointed to the ground and our forehead touching the mat. If we can get these two things, it's going to be very difficult for our opponent to stop us from escaping at this point. If we're turning in the opposite direction to the south and we're doing the Passover escape, our goal is to get our head to the outside of our opponent's knee. And typically we'll initiate this escape if our arm is on our opponent's south hip. So how this will often look is maybe we'll try an initial turning escape, but we're not able to get our thumb to the ground and our forehead to the ground, so our turning escape fails. No problem, our arm goes back to the center of our opponent's chest as we work to take our shoulder off the mat as much as possible. And as you can see, there's no tension in Taz's arm right now. His arm is bent. And as Sanchez works to extend his arm more, the arm gets thrown to the north hip and allows Taza to go into a successful turning man escape. So now let's see if we can use this understanding to better illustrate how Gordon Ryan was able to escape this armbar. So you can see Gordon starts with a turning escape, but Craig does a very good job of keeping Gordon's arm on his south hip, 
making it worst case scenario right now for Gordon. But since the arm is on the south hip, it's a good time for Gordon to try the Passover escape, and this is exactly what he does. But Craig does a good job in preventing Gordon from completing the Passover escape, but you can see Gordon's arm is center chest. And from Craig's perspective, he would like the arm on his north hip right now to go into the break. And again, I don't want to underestimate the amount of courage this takes, right? Like the amount of courage that is demonstrated by Gordon in this scenario is unbelievable. And he is not going to tap unless Craig is going to absolutely break his arm in half. So now as Gordon goes back to the mat, you can see him try the Passover escape one more time. But again, Craig does a good job of denying it. And as Gordon goes into another turning escape attempt, I believe Gordon was able to successfully escape because Craig did not follow him with his hips. Craig's hips throughout this whole armbar exchange were relatively straight, and in this last turning escape, Craig's hips were facing to the south while Gordon was spinning to the north, which in my opinion is the reason why Gordon was successful with this escape. So now just a few little bonus situations on armbar defenses. Typically when we find ourselves in the bottom of this spider web position, typically we'll start with a figure four grip and our opponent will be hugging our arm with their north arm and leaning towards our feet. If our opponent isn't leaning very seriously, we can often use our figure four grip to stack them. So to prevent this, our opponent will make their lean very serious. And if you've been on the receiving end of this lean, they can make life very uncomfortable for you and often get you to separate your figure four grip. But Alan Sanchez had a cool little counter to this and he flipped his leg over Taza's head and threw him in a quick triangle. So this is a pretty cool trick you can keep in your back pocket if your opponent is very intent on leaning towards your feet. Another thing our opponent will often do is they'll start to pummel their feet, and in this situation, Taza pummels his top foot inside of our armpit. Now in this situation, we have to be careful, because if we go into a turning escape, our opponent can take their torso leg out, and as we come up, we find ourselves in a triangle. So we'll see Alan Sanchez here on the bottom not panicking too much which forces Taza to take out his own torso leg and try to thread it through to go into his triangle. But Alan is wise to this and he threads his arm underneath the leg of Taza. So as Taza shoots his leg through and comes up, he finds that Alan's arm has left the party and there is no longer a triangle allowing Alan Sanchez to escape and win EBI 19. So I hope you guys enjoy the video. I hope you guys have been finding value in the content. And if so, consider supporting us on Patreon. Or if you're interested in joining the Discord, shoot me a message on Instagram and I will send you the link. Or just subscribe, like the video, leave a comment. Any help in cracking this YouTube algorithm is much appreciated. And we'll see you in the next video.